Denominations are outside the Word of God. There is supposed to be one body. Ephesians 4 says there is one, you know, wonderfully united, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, you know. And so basically, denominations, I don't think that they're wrong. I just don't think that they're biblical because all of them are the attachment to a man. Uh, Knox started the Presbyterian Church as a protest against something. Uh, Luther started the Lutheran Church as a protest. Wesley started the, the, the whole Methodist Church as a protest. Uh, you know, whatever his name is, the, who started the Baptist? Williams uh, started the Baptist in America as a protest against, you know. And it's all right. But, by the way, uh, when I did this last time, someone said, where is Tulsa Bible Church? And I said, it's right here. So, uh, so we could just go TBC right there. Uh, as long as we remain faithful to the Scriptures. And what's neat is we have within our fellowship Reformed, former, no longer Roman, Catholics, Charismatic, and Baptists, you know, the whole modern uh, movement. And so the denominations are outside because they're not biblical. They show up in 1 Corinthians. I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. I am of Cephas. There are three denominations right off. And others said, I am of Christ. And they were proud. You know what I mean? They thought they were better. And so um, it's not that you should d jump out of a denomination. Denominations identify what you believe. But a lot of people don't know what their denominations believe fully. And that's part of the problem, too. So, but it wasn't condemning them. It was just, they are extra biblical. And so are seminaries, and so are Bible colleges, and so is Sunday school. Those things, I could put Sunday school out here, that's not in the Bible, and mission agencies are not in the Bible, seminaries are not in the Bible, Bible colleges are not in the Bible. Everything was done in the New Testament through the what? Local church. Isn't that interesting to think about? How were pastors trained in the olden days? They were raised up from within a church. They were recognized, they were tested, they were affirmed, and they were sent out. It, it wasn't a business where you went off and you got a pedigree and a, and a great big long you know, thing to hang on the wall, and then you went out and marketed yourself. And, and it, we, are, we are becoming so worldly. And people wonder why there's this constant um, falling of pastors. It's because... No one knows them personally. No one knows their heart. No one knows their character. No one knows their personal devotion. They just know whether or not their books sell. And whether or not they... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. We were somewhere, and, and the television was on at, at the people's house, and there was some channel on, and there was a guy preaching. It looked like the Rose Bowl. And the guy told more... I mean, I stood there chuckling. I never saw such a smooth guy. I don't even know who he was. He was really young, probably in his early 30s so gifted a communicator. And everyone was just laughing. And he'd roll right in and give a little biblical punch. And he'd tell another story. And everybody would start laughing. And he'd throw another punch. And I thought, who knows him personally? And if he's preaching to the Rose Bowl-sized people, I mean, nobody probably ever gets close to him. And so what we have is, the last time that a major denomination had a convention in a city in Florida, they had the highest usage of the pay-per-view uh, movies with the pornography on them in that hotel chain that they'd ever had in history. And it was when a local, uh, major denomination had their pastor's conference in that city. Because nobody knows those people up close. Because they're, they were trained outside the local church, you know, and, and recruited and brought in. So there's just a lot of problems with that. But that's, hope that answered your question. A little more than you asked for. Mm -hmm.